This is the key to section 11.1 .1, part 1 and in this section you're focusing on the fundamental counting principle and so as we work through the problems we'll, we'll uh, discuss the principle again. But in number 1 you're asked a password consists of three digits followed by four letters and to determine how many different computer passwords are possible. Okay, and so in part A, you're told that the digits and letters can be repeated. All right, so you got to think about what you're dealing with here. So in one A, you have three. You have a combination that consists of three digits followed by four letters. So you have the first being a digit, the second being a digit, and the third being a digit. So remember, these are your your digits. Okay, and then the uh, following four are letters. So you have a letter combination, a letter combination, a letter combination, and a letter combination. So these are your your letter combinations. Okay, now here's the way you got to think about this using the fundamental counting principle. So the fundamental counting principle says that the number of ways in which a series of successive successive things can occur is found by multiplying, so these are going to be products here, so they're going to be multiplying, by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. So if I look at that first, that first one right here, that first digit, you have to remember that a digit, a digit consists of the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 9. Okay? And the letters consist of the alphabet, A, B, C, all the way to Z. Okay? All right, so how many digits are in, in this, in this um, series right here? Well, there are 10. There are 10 digits, right? And then in your alphabet, how many alphabets are there? There are 26. All right, so if there is no... If, if letters can be repeated, so the letters can be repeated, how many choices are there for that first part of that combination? Well, there are 10. All right, so, so remember, you can use the same letters, uh, the same numbers and letters. So how many choices are there for the second? 10 as well. Because if I use 7 here, I can still use 7 here. And then the third one, 10. Then over here, you have 26. So 26, the letters can be repeated. 26, 26, 26. So by the fundamental counting principle, the number of ways, the number of ways that, that you can get, the number of possibilities, the number of possibilities for a combination will be, and you just use your calculator. So you'd say 10, 10 to the third, so 10 to the third, times 26 to the fourth gives you that many. All right, so so there's going to be four, uh, okay, four, five, six, nine, seven, six, zero, zero, zero. So 456 million possibilities. All right, so that was part A. Now in part B, here's what you're told. So you're told, so this is, Four, five, six, so four hundred fifty six million nine hundred seventy six thousand. All right. In part B, you're told that digits and letters cannot be repeated. So so again, we have that same combination or that same series. So you have three digits followed by <coughs> four letters. Okay? All right, so again, how many digits are possible for the first one? Ten. All right, let's suppose I have a, let's suppose that 7 is here, that the digit 7 shows up. Can I use 7 again? No. So then that means I, I, my number of possibilities for digits decreases by 1. So, so how many choices do I have left for this one? 9. All right, suppose this is a 7 and this is a 6. Then can I use 7 and 6 for this one? Nope. So how many choices are left? 8. All right, so if there's no, or this is no, um, repetition. No repetition. All right. Okay, so no repetition. All right, now the letters. So for the first letter, how many possibilities are there? 26. 
Let's suppose that the letter B is chosen. Can I use B again in any of these? No. So how many are left for the next one? 25. All right, let's suppose B and F is used here. Can you use those for the others? Nope. So how many choices are left? 24, and then finally 23. So by the fundamental counting principle, the number of possibilities of the product of all of these um, of all these ways of picking these successive patterns. So I get 10 times 9 times 8 times 26, times 25, times 24, times 23. And so I get this many. So 2583360000. So obviously it decreases. You see it does decrease, right? Because you can't use here here you can you you have more possibilities than you have here because you can't use any repetition here. So that's possibilities. All right, so that's the answer for part B. So 2583 three, All right, number two. So a men's, depart, a men's department store sells three um, different full uh, suit jackets, six different shirts, eight different ties, and four different pairs of pants. How many different suits, how many different suits consisting of a jacket, shirt, tie, and pants are possible. All right, so, so number two, so number two, you want to choose a, um, let's see, a jacket. I'm going to take this out. So you want to choose a jacket. Okay, then you want to choose a shirt. Then you want to choose a tie. And then you want to choose a pant. All right. Okay, so how many possible how many possibilities are there for a jacket? Well, according to this, there are three. All right, so there are three. And then how many possibilities are there for a shirt? Six. How many possibilities are there for a tie? There are eight. And then how many possibilities are there for pants? There are four. And so according to the fundamental counting principle, the number of possibilities of these combinations will be the product of these numbers. So it'll be 3 times 6 times 8 times 4, which gives me 576. So 576 possibilities. All right. So the answer to number 2 is 576. All right, number 3. Okay, so if we look at number three, we have a committee is being formed from five people. Abe, Bob, Kate, Diane, and Ed. How many different ways can a two-person committee be formed with a chairperson and a vice chairperson? Assume that no person can have two positions. All right, so, so you're looking at five people. All right, so you have five people, but you only have a committee uh, consisting of two. So keep that in mind. So your committee, your committee... is two people. You have the uh, chairperson, okay, and then you have the vice chairperson. All right, now you, uh, for the chairperson, there are five people you can choose from, right? So five people. And then once the chairperson's chosen, that cha remember you can't have two positions. You can't you can't, um, a person can't share two positions. So, so if, if Abe is a chairperson, then Abe cannot be the vice chairperson. So how many people are left? Four. So you have, by the fundamental counting principle, then there are 20, five times four, so there are 20 um, possibilities. Possibilities for a two-person committee. All right, so that's what that, that means, okay? All right, so so that kind of makes sense because, because if you think about it, if you think about it, so you have Abe, 
so Abe can be vice uh, vice um, can be chairman and then let's say Bob can be so this is chairman and then vice chairman okay so Abe can be um, chairman Bob can be vice chairman or Bob can be chairman and Abe can be vice chairman or Abe can be chairman and then and then Kate can be vice chairman or Kate can be chairman and then Abe can be vice chairman right or Abe can be chairman Diane can be vice chairman Abe Diane or Diane Abe and so that's what's happening so you're counting so there should be 20 of these that's what that means so all together there should be 20 possibilities so that that's the point of of this problem so so you have Abe and then Ed Abe and then Ed or it could be Ed that's chairman and then Abe vice chairman right and then you can have Bob that's that's um, chairman and Kate as vice chairman so you see Bob and Kate's not listed here at all or you can have Kate and Bob and you continue on again there should be 20 of those all right so that's that's the in that that's what's being implied by this problem okay all right so that was number two all right I'm sorry number three all right let's look at number four so number three the answer answer is 20 right so number 20 uh, three is 20 all right number four so number four says a die has six sides numbers one two three four five six a single dies roll how many ways can you roll a number less than three then um, an even number and then an odd number so you're rolling this thing three times all right so you have a single you have a single die in your hand and you're gonna roll it and the question is how many ways can you roll it less than three then you're gonna roll it again then an even number and then roll it again and then an odd number so you're rolling this thing three times so the way I would uh, look at number four is this way so number four so in four you have you have a uh, first roll right then you have second roll and then you have third roll okay the first roll you're told you want you want to see you, you want it to be let me find it um, you want it to be less than three so how many of these numbers are less than three now remember less than three means means not equal to three all right so it strictly says less than three if you did it doesn't say less than or equal to three it strictly says less than three okay so there are one two so there are two there are two um, possibilities for less than three all right now the next one says you want this row to be an even number all right so how many even numbers can you have well there are three two four and six and then the third one is an odd number well there are three odd numbers one three and five and so if I by the fundamental counting principle <clears throat> then there will be two times three times three so there will be 18 possibilities so there are 18 possibilities in which in which the first row is a one or a two, the second row is an even number, and the third row is is an odd number. All right. So so what that means is this. So if you were to actually do this experiment, if you actually do this experiment, you would get something like this. All right. So let me uh, write this out. First row, second, third. So what that means is that you can get a one, two three so first row is is um, is um, less than three second row is an even number and the third row is an odd number or I can have the first being one the second being let's say four the next even number and then the third one being three okay it can be that as well or it could be a one six three so there are three possibilities right how many are there all together 18 all right, so then you can have, let's say, um, one, two, and then five, right? 
that could be a possibility. Then you can have one, two, and then let's say um, the next one would be what? Uh, I forgot the one as well, right? So it could be one. Uh, one, two, oops, sorry. One, four, one, and so on. So so when you do this, that will be 18 altogether. Now remember, I'm letting the first one be one, but remember you can also have two. So you can have two, two, three, couldn't you? So you can have a number two, you can have two here, and you can have three here. And altogether, that would be 18 of these. That's what you're saying. So there'll be 18 of these. So if you continue on this experiment, there'll be 18 of them. Okay? All right, so that was number four. So number four, the answer is 18. All right, number five. How many possibilities are there when an eight-sided die is rolled twice? All right, so an eight-sided die is rolled twice. So that's number five. So it's, it's rolled once and then again. All right, so first roll, second roll. All right, now remember, an eight-sided die has, has eight sides, right? So how many ways are there for the first roll to show up? Well, there are eight, eight possibilities. How many possibilities are there for the second roll? Eight. So by the fundamental counting principle, there are 64 possibilities. All right, so 64 possibilities. Okay? All right, now, the next one, so that's number five. So number six, you have this, number six. So number six says, a multiple choice test has six questions. Each question has five answer choices with a correct answer per question. If you select one of these choices for each question and leave nothing blank, how many, way, how many ways can you answer the, quest, the uh, questions on the test? All right, so, so question one, question two, question three, all the way to question six. So again, think of it this way. So number six, so number six, you have six questions. Question one, question two, question three, question four, question five, question six. Okay? So each question has five choices. So how many ways can you answer the first question? Well, five ways. How many ways can you answer the second question? Five ways. How many ways can you answer the third question? Five ways, and so on, right? So by the fundamental counting principle, the number of ways in which you can, you can answer a multiple choice test, questions one through six, will be the product of these. So it'll be five to the one, two, three, four, five, six, five to the sixth power, which equals, so on your calculator, figure out what five to the sixth power is, five raised to the six, five raised to the six equals so 15,625 possibilities. All right, so that's number six. So number six, um, 15,625, okay? All right, number seven. Okay, so number seven, you're told in California, Special license plates are issued to vehicles manufactured after 1922, which are at least 25 years old and of historical interest. One type of special license plate has three numbers followed by one letter. How many such license plates are possible if repetitions are allowed? All right, so number seven. So remember, you're told that this license plate has three numbers followed by a letter, and, and, you, and repetitions are allowed. So... Uh, first letter, second letter, I'm sorry, first number, second number, third number, and then the letter. So these are your numbers, and this is your letter. All right, so again, going back to your previous problem, how many, how many digits are available for the first number? There are 10. And then remember, repetition are allowed. So this is a 7, I can use 7 again. So 10 again. I can use any of these for this one. So 10 again. All right. Now, how many um, letters are there in the alphabet? 26. So then, according to the fundamental counting principle, the number of ways in which I can have the number of possibilities for this license plate will be the product of these. 
So that's going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 26, which gives me 26,000 possibilities. Okay? All right, so number 7 is 26,000. Okay, number 8. You are taking a survey in your experience at Taco Bell. For the first five questions, you can answer below average, average, above average for each question. All right? So there are three ways to answer the first five questions. The last question, you can resp uh, re respond e at either agree or disagree. So the last question, the last three questions, you have how many choices each? Two. How many total outcomes are uh, there for the survey? All right, so same idea. We're going to use a fundamental accounting principle. So um, the survey consists of five questions plus three questions. So there are eight questions all together. Okay, so five and then the last three. All right, so question one, question two, question three, Question four, question five, so that's your, your first five, and then the last three. Question six, question seven, question eight. So that's your first five right here, right? First five, and this is the last three. Okay? All right, so in the first five, remember you can, you can answer it three different ways. Below average, average, above average. So each one's below average, average, above average, right? So there are three ways to answer the first question. I can choose three ways to answer the second question. I can use three ways to answer the third question, three ways to answer the fourth question, and then three ways to answer the fifth question. The last three, there are, <clears throat> um, let's see, agree or disagree, right? So agree or disagree. So there are two choices for that one. So 2 times 2 times 2. So according to the fundamental counting principle, according to the fundamental counting principle, the, the number of ways in which you can answer the survey is a product of these. So you're going to get 3 raised to the 5th. So 3 raised to the 5th times 2 raised to the 3rd equals 1,000. 944 possibilities. All right, so 1,944 possibilities. Okay, number nine. How many odd two-digit integers greater, that should be greater, than 20 are there? For example, 23, 37, 41, 73, 99 would be considered odd two different integers greater than 20. So how many odd two different integers greater than 20 are there? For example, um, these numbers would be considered um, odd two-digit two digit integers greater than 20. All right, so the way you want to think about this is this. So you're talking about two-digit numbers, right? Okay, so two-digit numbers. So let's think about this. It's not that difficult if you think about it. So you have a two-digit number. You want it to be odd. You want it to be odd. Well, in order for a two-digit number to be odd, look at the last digit. All the last digits are what kind of numbers? They're odd, all right? So let's think about the digits that are odd. So your digits that are odd are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, right? So how many digits are odd? Five of them. So there are how many possibilities for that last digit? So remember, this must be odd. In order to get an odd digit, an, an odd number, the last digit must be odd. So how many possibilities are there? There are five. Okay? All right. Now, the first digit can be any number. Because, look, I had, a, I had an, odd, uh, e, an even number for the first digit. And uh, I had um, an odd number for the um, first digit as well. All right. So let's think about your even numbers and odd. So, so the digits, so the so the uh, digits that can be here would be something like two, three, four, five, all the way to. I'm sorry, I forgot one. So one, right? All right. So you wouldn't include zero because you look your your 
your uh, two digit numbers greater than oops I'm sorry I say greater than 20 right so greater than 20 so I couldn't I can't use one I cannot use one so it must be greater than 20 so like 21 22 I'm sorry 21 23 25 and so on so remember I can't use one because it did say greater than 20 so let's see how many are there so there's one so we're going two three four five six seven eight nine so one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight possibilities for that one so by the fundamental counting principle then there are going to be eight times five so there are forty possibilities all right so so some are here's some some are and we, we did this already um, if, if I were to start with 21 you'd say 21 23 20 5, 27, 29, 31, and so on. And according to this, there will be 40 of them. So there will be 40 of those. Okay? Alright. Now, this is number 9. So number 9, the answer is 40. Okay, let's look at number 10. A teenager is given five different jobs, and they must that they must do before they may go out to a movie with friends. The jobs are washing a car, starting a load of laundry, vacuuming the family room, taking out the garbage, and putting away the dishes. In how many different ways could the teenager complete these jobs? All right, so a teenager is given five different jobs that they must do before they go out to a movie with friends. All right, so here's, here's what you got to think about this. So there's number 10. All right, so number 10, number 10, you have five jobs. So job one, job two, job three, job four, and job five. Okay? So for job one, for job one, I can do any of these. I can, I can wash the car. I can start the load of laundry. I can do any of these. So there's um, uh, one, two, three three, four, five, right? So there are five choices for the first job. Okay? Now let's suppose the first thing I did was wash a car. So I'm already done with that, right? I'm already done with washing cars. So how many are left? Well, there are four left. So times four. Okay, job three. So let's suppose I washed a car and, uh, and I did the laundry next. Then how many are left? Three. So you get the pattern. So three, and then this would be two, and then the, the uh, job five would be the only one that's remaining, which is one. And so according to the fundamental counting principle, there are five times four times three times two, and then you don't need to say times one, but so there are 120. So there are 120 possibilities. Okay. All right, so that's the answer number 10. So number 10 is 120. Okay? All right, so that's the key to worksheet 11.1, .1, part 1.